So a while back, we got contacted by one of our members, Martin, and they were asking about advice um, because they were just about to photograph a charity event where one of the royals was going to be attending. And of course, in the UK at present, we're just about to go through one of our biggest celebrations of crowning of a new king. Uh, sadly, after uh, the death of our, our Queen uh, Elizabeth II, um, but again, a celebration. And, um, you know, the royals are working uh, professionals at the end of the day throughout um, uh, the, U the UK. There's pretty much not a week goes by that, you know, one of the working royals is not going to be out there helping charities and so on with it. So... Um, Heads up to begin with, I've actually never been given a commission to take a portrait of any of the royals, um, but I've actually photographed uh, the royals, including uh, King Charles and the uh, Queen Cod, or Camilla, uh, lots of times uh, during the past kind of uh, 20 years. Um, and that was all been related to children's charities that I'm very, very close to. And uh, once you're given these opportunities, um, you kind of start to learn that, you know, they are just real people anyway, but there are some kind of things that you should kind of just follow as good technique and good etiquette as well with it and things. And there's always a press secretary around for you to say hello to, ask the kind of the, if, if there's any rules of the day, you know, don't be worried about telling them, look, you've never actually been uh, photographing any of the royals before. What should I be doing or what shouldn't I be doing is the key things with it. So uh, let's talk that through. Um, the, the one thing I said, as you know, I, I haven't been given a commission uh, and it's not on my bucket list, but I would never, ever refuse it if it came knocking at my door. Um, but uh, as far as the um, opportunity to be involved with um, any celebrity and any kind of event uh, can be a little bit of a nerve wracking one, especially if you've never done it before. You know, it's like anything, the more you do it, the, the kind of the more you just take it for granted and you know the kind of the running uh, uh, methods and everything else with it. So my advice, okay, the first thing is, uh, I touched on it already, um, usually uh, the likes of a press secretary or somebody accompanying them will come into the room prior to the actual uh, royal arriving. That is unless they're running really late, of course. Um, but if you're photographing for the charity, remember there's going to be a lot of activity going on. There's a lot of excitement going on by people and children alike. Plus, there's probably going to be some special people involved with the charity, sponsors, supporters, whatever it is, that you might need to actually understand what their role is going to be, as well as if there is going to be any presentations. That That's absolutely essential to understand from the event themselves what they would really like covered. So so don't just get kind of rabbit in the headlight to do with this is all about the person, the royal. Yes, it is. And obviously um, images that you're going to be taken are, are going to be used to help that event raise valuable funds or to support them. Or in, in this case, a bit of everything, including the most important part was to give the children a, a real kind of experience, um, seriously ill kids that um, you know, this is all about experiences and things and just being able to actually be in the same room, never mind shake their hands and, you know, the likes of the Queen Consort sit, sitting down with them and having a chat uh, is is an exciting thing and a, a worrying thing as well. So you don't want to build up the anxiety and you want to make it fast. So first, f first things first, um, understand what your role is and what you need to get done actually on the day before you then worry about what you're going to be doing as far as the uh, the royal photographs are concerned. There's a couple of techniques. I, I pretty much always use um, bounce flash. Um, that is because I'm going to be in very small confined er um, areas. I'm going to be probably going to be using a medium zoom lens. So it's like the 24 to 105 where I can get um, close in and basically wide angle at the same time uh, to sh kind of show bigger groups. And um, that lens choice and the bounce uh, card just on the flash is usually enough to actually give me my work in kind of uh, standardized image throughout and things really. And if I'm working indoors, I, I tend to shoot something like 400 ISO. Um, I'll be shooting uh, around about a 60th of a second and around about 5, 5.6 F4 because I need some depth of field as well and things. 
Um, so that's my standard kind of setup um, that I'm going to be working with the whole time. I do run with a battery power pack that is feeding the power to the speed light anyway. So I'm not going to run out of juice, you know, half uh, halfway through photographing the actual shot and things. So for me, the etiquette is stand off, don't get in their faces to make sure that they're happy with you being in the surrounding there's usually only ever going to be in a private event um, the kind of the event photographer plus possibly uh, somebody from press. The the most you'll have in a a private event is two press and a private photographer as well and things really. Um, the very first time I ever photographed Prince Charles, in fact, at King Charles. Uh, um, was the opening of a Holiday Inn in Swansea. And uh, I'd never photographed uh, royalty at all um, as far as at an event or, or, or in any way. And I, I was ner uh, nervous. Um, the good news was I was with um, them for the opening. Uh, then I was with them for the charity kind of uh, dinner following on uh, and then basically I was with the charity all day the next day where they were doing kind of um, the main fundraising but uh, uh, Prince Charles at the time wasn't there at that point and and for me um, I, I did exactly as I recommended you I just try and found something and go is is there things I can't do today and, and one of the best advice was like just don't get in their faces don't keep flashing 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 the whole time choose your pick pictures no these are the days of film I'm on about the late 80s um, so in that case you didn't want to burn through you know your film too much um, at the time we're photographing on Hasselblad so we only get 24 shots on a roll so we had to pick and choose our shots and be ready to change backs and time ourselves well, Whereas with digital, of course, you can just keep that shutter going the whole time. And, and that is the one part of the etiquette I'll, per, I'll, I'll pass on straight away is, is choose your shots. Don't over flash. Don't over kill the images. Don't get in their faces and give yourself an opportunity to be able to move through the crowd. I usually just don't want to kind of walk along a, a, a line uh, trying to kind of pick off the... Um, a celebrity, or in this case, the royal, with you know somebody as the shake the shaking hand. If I can, I want to slightly change my viewpoint to change the picture point of view to allow me to just get that little bit more variety to kind of maximise the events. Um, the kind of event that I'm at, I, I'm not selling images. So in other words, I'm working for the charity uh, for free. I'm giving them all the images. They've obviously got restrictions on what they're actually going to be doing with the photographs. They they can't sell the uh, the images. They can use them intern internally. And if for any reason they do end up selling an image to a newspaper or whatever it would be, um, because it's quite a special photograph, then all of the proceeds go directly to the charity. So that's one of the things that I do with as far as image uses are concerned. Um, I I was also kind of uh, uh, taught that, you know, you never photograph um, the Queen while she eats. Uh, unfortunately, I've never had the opportunity to photograph our late Queen. Um, um, however, that was in my head all, all the way. So if there are or if there's a buffet going on or if they're having a light drink uh, uh, within groups, I'm never going to be doing a shot when they're kind of just about to eat or whatever it is. I'll really show them I've backed off. Um, so they're not feel, feeling they've got to watch themselves. I, I can't even imagine, to be honest, how pressurised it must feel. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you feel about uh, royalty and kind of whether we should have royals or not. That, that's completely besides the point. As a professional photographer, you're put into a scene where you've got to capture these images. What we're not really looking for is embarrassment. We're looking for um, images that are celebratory images, uh, especially when you're given such special opportunities, when you're working with these children's charities to really see and take a glimpse of these children's expressions when they actually at long last get to actually meet them because they could have been hanging around the kids for around about an hour or so. And uh, again, it's quite kind of magical, as I said, to actually uh, kind of see it. So um, medium to zoom lens, uh, bounce flash, stand off a little bit more. You're probably going to be needing to shoot a setup group at some stage. Even the uh, the kind of the, the press officer with them, 
um, will kind of say to you, is there anything special that you need to get? And I say, well, I need to actually get a group with the kids and things really and blah, blah, blah. Can we do that either in the middle or at least five to 10 minutes before they're due to leave? Because you might only have them in the kind of the uh, the event for probably 20 minutes to half an hour and find out how much time. Um, because remember, at any one stage, they can be whip, whipped off there. So don't leave everything to the last minute. Capture as much as you can going through. When you are photographing a group, um, make it very quick. Be very precise. They will absolutely appreciate you for doing that. And then, you know, uh, bring in something to gain an expression. Remember, you know, these people are professionals um, and they are very aware of how powerful their being involved with a charity can help that charity. And they are there to help the charity. And in that case, they are there to help you to get the best photograph you can. So if you can be proficient and um, organize whatever size group um, that you need to do, then, then basically make it minutes uh, uh, to actually put together and shoot. That's the way you'll get the best expressions. And then never be afraid once you've got that main group done to actually kind of uh, uh, create an almost press image as well, a slightly smaller group, a little bit more kind of uh, buoyant. These things are easy when we're, I've been involved um, at Clarence House when they were dressing Chris, Christmas trees with the children. In fact, I was lucky enough to do uh, the first event that uh, King Charles and uh, Camilla Codsor, um, uh, kind of came out in their professional environment, as, as it were, many, many moons ago now. Um, but we were with um, the charity and we had no idea. We thought it was just Prince Charles at the time coming out. Um, but then um, uh, Camilla kind of joined in. And basically that is why we hired I ITV crew. That's an independent television that was supplying all the other uh, t uh, the TV stations anyway. And we had a press photographer there as well. Uh, but the whole point was to maximise it. It was their first event together. That must have been a daunting thing for them. But when you see the interaction of professional people with the people they have to interact with, you know, they're being forced into a room. They've got to get uh, involved with them. They've got to make idle chit chat. And they are really interested in these people. That is one of the things I'm trying to get is as a storyteller in, in the realm of kind of uh, an event photography where we need to kind of capture these pic pictures. Whoever they're speaking to, we need to kind of capture that few seconds that they'll talk about for a very, very long time, if not for the rest of their, their, their lives and things, really. So when they're there and they're dressing the Chris, the Christmas trees, using the likes of, you know, the likes of Bounce Flash or whatever it is, a lot better because the light's going to spread more. It's going to kind of uh, uh, kind of flick around the whole place. Plus, it's going to fill in a little bit and you're going to be able to actually get more people with a shot evenly lit than actually just a directional flash with ugly shadows behind and so on. If you're working outside, that tends to be a little bit more kind of looser um, because there's it's easier for them to wander uh, because there's more space. Whereas where you're in a room environment, because of the natural confinement of a room, you're going to be restrict, restricted. And, and I'm kind of looking around how I can almost move through the crowd um, to actually get that different viewpoint the whole time. Uh, I'm not afraid, uh, as I said, to kind of kneel down or get higher or whatever it is. A little bit of respect of the kind of location that you're in, you know, is really what it's about. But um, again, I, I, I just that, I hope that helps Mar Martin and anybody else who ever gets the opportunity to actually uh, be photographing any celebrity, include, including royals. You know, there is a little bit of etiquette, whereas a celebrity might come up to you as, and, and, and in your face go, is there anything that you need before I go? Uh, which is great. You know, you're not going to get that from a royal. You're going to get it from one of their minders or one of their kind of press secretaries and so on with it. So be aware for that. But um, just don't get in their faces. Good luck with it.